Charvaka, also known as Lokayata, is an ancient school. Harvaka, also known as Lokayata, is an ancient school of Indian materialism and is considered one of the atheistic schools in ancient Indian philosophies. Charvaka emphasizes direct perception, empiricism, and conditional inference as proper sources of knowledge, embracing philosophical skepticism and rejecting ritualism. It was a popular belief system in ancient India. Traditionally, Brihaspati, a philosopher, is referred to as the founder of Charvaka or Lokayata philosophy, although this is disputed by some scholars. The philosophy emerged during the Hindu Reformation period in the first millennium BCE, alongside the establishment of Buddhism by Gautama Buddha and the reorganization of Jainism by Parshvanatha. Charvaka's teachings are found in historic secondary literature such as the Shastras, Sutras, and Indian epic poetry. In essence, Charvaka epistemology states that whenever one infers a truth from a set of observations or truths, one must acknowledge doubt, inferred knowledge is conditional. Charvaka is categorized as one of the Nastigar, heterodox, schools of Indian philosophy. The etymology of Charvaka Sanskrit, Kavaka, is uncertain. According to the grammarian Hemakandra, the word is derived from the root, carve, meaning, to chew. He explains it as, a Karvaka chews the self Karvatyatmanam Karvaka. Hemakandra's references to his own grammatical work, Anadisutra 37, which lists various words ending with the suffix, Aka, formed irregularly, such as Mavaka, Sayamaka, Vartaka, Yantaka, Guvaka, and Bhadrakadeya. Another interpretation of the name suggests it could mean, agreeable speech, or, pejoratively, sweet-tongued, derived from Sanskrit's karu, meaning, agreeable, and vak, meaning, speech, which becomes vak in the nominative singular and in compounds. Yet another hypothesis proposes that it is eponymous, with the founder of the school being Charvaka, a disciple of Brihaspati. According to Dabhiprasad Chattopadhyaya, the traditional name of Charvaka is Lokayata. It was called Lokayata because it was prevalent among the people and meant the world outlook of the people. The term Lokayata signifies, directed towards, aiming at the world, worldly. In early to mid-20th century literature, the etymology of Lokayata has been given different interpretations, partly due to the unavailability of primary sources and the deduction of meaning from divergent secondary literature. The name Lokayata is found in Chanakya's Arthashastra, where it refers to three philosophical systems, Yoga, Samkhya, and Lokayata. However, in the Arthashastra, Lokayata does not imply an anti-Vedic stance but rather suggests Lokayata as a part of Vedic lore, referring to logic or the science of debate. In 8th century CE Jaina literature, Lokayata is described as the Hindu school that denies the existence of God, rebirth, samsara karma, duty, fruits of merit, and sin. The Buddhist Sanskrit work Divyavadana mentions Lokayata as a subject of study, with the sense of technical logical science. Both Shantarakshita and Adi Shankara use the word Lokayata to mean materialism, with Shankara specifically using the term Lokayata, not Charvaka. In Silanka's commentary on Sutra Kirtanya, the oldest Jain Agama Prakrit literature, four terms are used for Karvaka, Braspatya, Lokayata, Buddhavadan, and Vamamargan. The Charvaka atheistic doctrines can be traced to the relatively later composed layers of the Rigveda, while substantial discussions on Charvaka are found in post-Vedic literature. The primary literature of Charvaka, such as the Braspati Sutra, is missing or lost. Its theories and development have been compiled from historic secondary literature such as the Shastras, Sutras, and the epics of Hinduism, as well as from the dialogues of Gautama Buddha and Jain literature. In the oldest of the Upanishads, the Bradaranyaka, circa 700 BCE, the leading theorist Yajnavakya states in a passage often referred to by the irreligious, so I say, after death there is no awareness. This declaration arises in a discussion with his female philosophy interlocutor, Maitreyi, who notices that this might mean there is no afterlife or religion. Substantial discussions about Charvaka doctrines are found in texts from the 6th century BCE, coinciding with the emergence of competing philosophies such as Buddhism and Jainism. It is posited that Charvaka may have been one of several atheistic, materialist schools that existed in ancient India during this time. While there is evidence of its development in the Vedic era, the Charvaka school of philosophy predates the Astika schools and serves as a philosophical predecessor to subsequent or contemporaneous philosophies such as Ajnana, Ajivika, Jainism, and Buddhism in the classical period of Indian philosophy. The earliest Charvaka scholar in India whose texts still survive is Ahita Kesakambali. 
Charvaka was the only school that systematized materialist philosophy by setting them down in the form of aphorisms in the 6th century BCE. While materialist schools existed before Charvaka, it was the first to codify and write down the details of its philosophy, which became more common with the emergent popularity of Buddhism in the 6th century BCE onwards. E. W. Hopkins, in his book, The Ethics of India, 1924 claims that Charvaka philosophy predated Jainism and Buddhism, mentioning, the old Karvaka are materialist of the 6th century BC. Rhys Davids assumes that Lokayata in the 5th century BC came to mean, skepticism, in general without yet being organized as a philosophical school. This suggests that Charvaka had already existed for centuries and had become a generic term by 600 BCE. Its skeptical methodology is included in the Ramayana, Ayodhya Kanda, Chapter 108, where Jabali tries to persuade Rama to accept the kingdom by using Nastika arguments, Rama refutes him in Chapter 109. Oh, the highly wise! Arrive at a conclusion, therefore, that there is nothing beyond this universe. Give precedence to that which meets the eye and turn your back on what is beyond our knowledge. 2.108.17 there are alternate theories behind the origins of Charvaka. Braspati is sometimes referred to as the founder of Charvaka or Lokayata philosophy, although other scholars dispute this. Billington, 1997, page 43, states that a philosopher named Charvaka lived in or about the 6th century BCE, who developed the premises of this Indian philosophy in the form of the Braspati Sutra. These sutras predate 150 BCE, as they are mentioned in the Mahabhasya, 7.3.45. Arthur Llewellyn Basham, citing the Buddhist Samanyafala Sutta, suggests six schools of heterodox, pre-Buddhist, and pre-Jain, atheistic Indian traditions in the 6th century BCE, which included Charvakas and Ajivikas. Charvaka was a living philosophy up to the 12th century in India's historical timeline, after which this system seems to have disappeared without leaving any. The Charvaka school of philosophy had a variety of atheistic and materialistic beliefs, with a focus on perception and direct experiments as the valid and reliable sources of knowledge. Epistemology Charvaka's epistemology holds perception as the primary and proper source of knowledge, while inference is considered prone to being either right or wrong and therefore conditional or invalid. They distinguish between external and internal perception, with external perception arising from the interaction of the five senses and worldly objects, and internal perception being that of the inner sense, the mind. Inference is described as deriving a new conclusion and truth from one or more observations and previous truths. Charvaka's view inference is useful but prone to error, as inferred truths can never be without doubt. They argue that there are no reliable means by which the efficacy of inference as a means of knowledge could be established. An example used to explain Charvaka's epistemological argument is that of fire and smoke. While it is often true that where there is smoke, there is fire, it need not be universally true, according to Charvaka's. They argue that smoke can have other causes besides fire. Therefore, as long as the relation between two phenomena, or observation and truth, has not been proven as unconditional, it is considered an uncertain truth by Charvaka. They assert that full knowledge is reached when all observations, premises, and conditions are known, but the absence of conditions cannot be established beyond doubt by perception alone, as some conditions may be hidden or escape observation. Charvakas acknowledge that every person relies on inference in daily life, but they caution against uncritical acceptance of inference, as it can lead to error. They argue that truth is not an unfailing characteristic of inference but rather an accident of inference, one that is separable. Therefore, they advocate for skepticism and critical questioning of our knowledge and epistemology. The Charvaka epistemological proposition was influential among various schools of Indian philosophies, as it demonstrated a new way of thinking and prompted a re-evaluation of past doctrines. Hindu, Buddhist, and Jain scholars extensively used Charvaka insights on inference in the rational re-examination of their own theories. Comparison with other schools of Hinduism Charvaka epistemology represents minimalist pramanas epistemological methods in Hindu philosophy, as they accepted only one valid way to knowledge, perception. Other schools of Hinduism developed and accepted multiple valid forms of epistemology, ranging from two to six. For example, Advaita Vedanta scholars considered six means of valid knowledge and truths, perception, inference, comparison and analogy, postulation, non-perception, and testimony of past or present reliable experts. Metaphysics
Charvakas denied metaphysical concepts such as reincarnation, an extracorporeal soul, the efficacy of religious rites, other worlds heaven and hell fate, and the accumulation of merit or demerit through the performance of certain actions. They rejected the use of supernatural causes to explain natural phenomena, believing that all natural phenomena arose spontaneously from the inherent nature of things. Charvaka's view is summarized in the following verse. The fire is hot, the water cold, refreshing cool the breeze of morn, by whom came this variety? From their own nature was it born. This verse reflects Charvaka's emphasis on empirical observation and rejection of metaphysical explanations for natural phenomena. Consciousness and afterlife. Charvaka did not believe in karma, rebirth, or an afterlife. They believed that all attributes representing a person, such as thinness or fatness, resided in the body alone. The Sarvasiddhanta Sambraha expresses the Charvaka position by stating, There is no world other than this, there is no heaven and no hell, the realm of Shiva and like regions are fabricated by stupid impostors. Pleasure. Charvaka believed that sensual pleasure was not inherently wrong. They recognized that pleasure and pain are inseparable, and wisdom lay in enjoying pleasure while avoiding pain as much as possible. Unlike many Indian philosophies of the time, Charvaka did not advocate for austerities or the rejection of pleasure out of fear of pain, viewing such reasoning as foolish. The Sarvasiddhanta Sambraha describes the Charvaka position on pleasure and hedonism, stating, the enjoyment of heaven lies in eating delicious food, keeping company with young women, using fine clothes, perfumes, garlands, sandal paste, while moksha is death which is cessation of life breath, the wise therefore ought not to take pains on account of moksha. A fool wears himself out by penances and fasts. Chastity and other such ordinances are laid down by clever weaklings. The scholar Bhattacharya argues against the common belief that all materialists are nothing but sensualists, stating that no authentic Charvaka aphorism has been cited by the movement's opponents to support this view. Charvakas rejected many standard religious conceptions of Hindus, Buddhists, Jains, and Ajivakas, including the belief in an afterlife, reincarnation, samsara, cycle of rebirth karma, and religious rites. They were critical of the Vedas, as well as Buddhist scriptures. According to the Sarvadarsana Sambraha, a text with commentaries by Madhavacharya, Charvakas were described as materialists without morals or ethics, who were critical of the Vedas. They believed that the Vedas were flawed, containing errors, untruths, self-contradictions, and tautologies. The Charvakas pointed to disagreements and debates among Vedic priests as evidence that the Vedas were unreliable. They considered the Vedas to be incoherent rhapsodies that only served to provide a livelihood for priests. They also believed that the Vedas were man-made and lacked divine authority. Charvakas rejected the need for ethics or morals, advocating instead for living happily and indulging in pleasure. The Jain scholar Haribhadra included Charvaka in his list of six darsanas philosophical systems of Indian traditions, noting their belief that there is nothing beyond the senses, consciousness is an emergent property, and seeking what cannot be seen as foolish. However, the accuracy of these views attributed to Charvakas has been contested by scholars, indicating that the true beliefs and teachings of the Charvaka school may not have been accurately portrayed in the texts that survive today. In the epic Mahabharata, Book 12 Chapter 39, there is a tale involving a rakshasa disguised as a Brahmin named Charvaka. Charvaka assumes the role of a spokesperson for all Brahmins and confronts Yudhishthira, criticizing him for killing his kinsmen, superiors, and teacher. He claims that all Brahmins are cursing. Yudhishthira. Although Yudhishthira is ashamed, the Brahmin Vaishampayana reassures him. Enraged, the Brahmins use the power of their mantras to destroy Charvaka. Charvaka philosophy is not extensively documented in independent works, with only a few sutras attributed to Brihaspati. However, the 8th century work Tattvopaplavasimha by Jayarasi Bhatta, which shows Madhyamaka influence, is a significant source. Other works like Shatdarshan Samuche and Sarvadarsana Sangraha by Vidyaranya also elucidate Charvaka thought. One of the most studied references to Charvaka philosophy is found in the Sarva Darsana Sangraha, a renowned work by the 14th century Advaita Vedanta philosopher Madhava Vidyaranya. The book begins with a chapter on the Charvaka system, acknowledging its challenge to the notion of divine bestowal of supreme felicity. Vidyaranya highlights the enduring influence of Charvaka's philosophy, particularly encapsulated in the popular refrain While life is yours, live joyously. None can escape death's searching eye. When is this frame of ours they burn? How shall it e'er again return?
Additionally, Sanskrit poems and plays such as the Nasadakarita, Prabhata Kandradeya, Agama Dambara, Vidvan Modaturangini, and Kadambari contain representations of Charvaka thought. However, these works were authored by individuals who strongly opposed materialism, presenting Charvaka in an unfavorable light. Therefore, their portrayals should be approached critically. After the 12th century, the Charvaka tradition did not continue, and there are no original works on Charvaka philosophy. The knowledge we have of Charvaka is fragmentary, largely based on criticisms of its ideas by other schools, as it is not a living tradition. Scholars like Chatterjee and Data explain that while materialism has always been present in India to some extent, there is no systematic work or organized school of Charvaka followers as seen in other philosophical traditions. Instead, references to materialistic views are found in the texts of other schools, used for refutation rather than as direct sources of Charvaka thought. There is controversy regarding the reliability of sources on Charvaka philosophy. Bhattacharya argues that claims of hedonism, lack of morality, and disregard for spirituality attributed to Charvakas may be biased and exaggerated as they primarily come from texts of competing religious philosophies. The original sources and commentaries by Charvaka scholars are missing or lost, leading to inconsistencies in manuscripts and raising questions about the accuracy of these claims. The Skalita Pramathana Yuktaihita city, found in a Tibetan manuscript, discusses Charvaka philosophy but attributes a theistic claim to Charvakas, which may not be authentic. Other traditions like Buddhism, Jainism, Advaita Vedanta, and Nyaya considered Charvakas as opponents and tried to refute their views. These refutations serve as indirect sources of Charvaka philosophy, but they may not always accurately represent Charvaka thought. Overall, the understanding of Charvaka philosophy is based on secondhand knowledge and should be approached critically. Bhattacharya suggests that the charge of hedonism against Charvaka may have been exaggerated. Reap states that Charvakas hold truth, integrity, consistency, and freedom of thought in high regard, countering the argument that they opposed all that was good in the Vedic tradition. In Europe, reports about the openness and rational doubts of Mughal Emperor Akbar and Indians surprised Europeans. Jesuit reports compared Akbar to an atheist for refusing to make reason subservient to faith. Jesuit writings in the early to mid-17th century began to provide a more detailed understanding of Indian philosophies, including Charvaka. Roberto de Nobili, a Jesuit, wrote in 1613 about the Lokayatas who believed that the elements themselves are God. Heinrich Roth, another Jesuit, translated Vedantasara, which depicts four different schools of Charvaka philosophies. Wojciechowski suggests that rather than a Karvaka renaissance in Akbar's court, it is safer to say that the ancient school of materialism never really disappeared. In the book, Classical Indian Philosophy, 2020, by Peter Adamson and Joan Arden Ganeri, they mention Henry T. Coolbrook's 1827 lecture on the schools of Charvaka Lokayata materialists. They compare Charvakas to emergentism in the philosophy of mind, tracing it back to John Stuart Mill, who sounded like a follower of Braspati, the founder of the Charvaka system, when he wrote about organized bodies being composed of parts similar to those in inorganic nature. Adamson and Ganeri suggest that John Stuart Mill's statement in his System of Logic, all organized bodies are composed of parts, similar to those composing inorganic nature, aligns with Charvaka philosophy, likening him to a follower of Braspati, the founder of the Charvaka system. Historian Dagher Bjornsrid has highlighted the influence of Charvaka schools on China. He references a paper by Professor Huang Xinchuan, published in 1978, which demonstrates how Indian Lokayata schools influenced ancient Chinese thought over centuries. Xinchuan lists 62 classical Chinese texts that mention these Indian material atheistic schools, from the Brahmajala Sutra translated by Ji Qian of the Kingdom of Wu to an explanation for Brahmajala Sutra written by Ji Guang of the Ming Dynasty. Xinchuan explains how Buddhists considered Lakayatikas as aligned with Confucian and Taoist schools and attacked them for their materialistic views. He cites several Chinese classical works that describe Lokayata as Shi Jian Xing, Doctrine Prevailing in the World, Wu Hu Shi Lun, Doctrine of Denying Afterlife, or refer to Lu Ka Yi Jin, the Lokayata Sutra. Commentators like Avidakarna, Bhavivakta, Kambalasvatara, Pirandera, and Udvadabhata further develop the Charvaka Lokayata system in various ways. The influence of Charvaka philosophy is evident in the work of Dharmakirti, a 7th century philosopher deeply influenced by its ideas, as seen in his writing Pramanvartic.
The heterodox doctrine of Charvaka has also influenced other spheres of Indian thought. The Charvaka Ashram, founded by Badu Ramakrishna in 1973, continues to promote the rationalist movement. Criticism of Charvaka philosophy can be found in the Ain i Akbari, a record of the Mughal Emperor Akbar's court. Abu al Fazl ibn Mubarak, the Mughal historian, summarizes Charvaka philosophy as unenlightened and describes their literature as lasting memorials to their ignorance. According to Mubarak, Charvaka's view paradise is the state in which man lives as he chooses, without control of another, while hell is seen as the state in which he lives subject to another's rule. Charvakas believe that good statecraft involves the knowledge of just administration and benevolent government. 